this is the second part. So we have, in the first part, we made the four different types of shop from one building. And now we're gonna go around and look at the interiors. It's gonna be a speed build and I'll just do comments throughout. I won't talk all the way through. Um, I'll just give little hints. And if there's any questions about any particular thing, that you've seen me do just uh you can just ask if there's any sort of techniques or anything i i forget to mention all right so we'll go in the order we'd originally made them in which is the smithy the creepy conservatory the wizard's workshop and the summoning chamber and smithy is an easy one to start with with the interior as well um just grabbing a lot of things like your Armory sign, Hella Hammer sign, your forges. Um, the one tip I'll give you for forges is you can put a um, brazier in the middle square underneath a forge to give it a fire effect. But you need to go and do it like I've just done it here, um, otherwise, you can't set it down. So go back and fill in that middle one, and then suddenly you've got nice, fiery, flickery forges. And just with the display frames, um, I tend to like to make sure there is a relatively clear background behind them when I'm using them to display items. So if I'm doing something like using this timbered wood, I will go back and chip out the bits that'll have the display frame so that you can see those items a little bit more clearly. I will for this as well use um, Pretty much exclusively the modern lights i do wish there was a little bit more variation but in terms of lighting a whole room without having a lot of lights sort of hanging around and not looking great this is the the best way that i've found to to light room so i tend to hide a lot of them in most roofs I thought that uh, cannons and like a blister would be a nice touch in a smithy, sort of so you can see that you've got all your different types of weapons, um, as if you were in sort of a, a game where you could actually go buy those in a shop. And then I thought I'd just do a little bit of decoration in front. I want to keep the smithy probably the most plain because it's the most simple type of shop, and we don't want all the shops to be really noisy we want some simplicity so the summoning chamber in the smithy will probably be a little bit more simple on the outside than the creepy conservatory and the wizard's workshop And so the other thing we'll be doing here is fancying up the exteriors, like I'd mentioned in the first video. So this is going to be a little bit more how to make these a little extra special. And because of the way we've done this design, I've decided to actually move the window for the smithy over to the other side um, because I want it to be actually able to see and I want all of them to have a decent window you can see in because it just makes a little bit more dynamic and interesting when you can see that it's not just a plain facade. And so one way to make an interesting front is to just do a small cap like I just did with four roof pieces and if you just use two corners 
Um, you honestly don't even need to put down any um, supports, but you can always put down supports as well for a little extra interesting finish. And we'll go around as well, we'll um, change all of that um, sort of outside garden because we want it now to look like a street. So we want all of it to match. And I actually realized I think that the vault tiles are probably gonna be what I'll use for all my flooring. So I'm just gonna go around and start making that look all a little bit more the same. So I'll move the window over to the other side and I'm actually going to do a nice plain glass window so we can see the cannon in the window as well. It's kind of like if you were the smithy, that's maybe one of your better works or something you're proud of, your big cannon. So if you have that in the window for people to come and see when they're shopping. And I figured, again, to keep simplicity and just a more traditional fantasy theme for the smithy, uh, we're just going to have some flowers out the front and a few tools um, and nothing too outrageous. We want to have a lot of crates um, as well, I figured, sort of leading out the back. Um, it's not something you'll see immediately, but it's something when you're sort of looking around, you'll probably notice a little bit. I like using a lot too of the wooden brackets um, just to add detail in a lot of places. It's a great way to sort of automatically make things look a little bit more interesting and especially on those insides of curves, it just makes it look a little less like things are just sort of floating in the air. And for now, we'll just throw in the last few little details, like I said, those um, tools and crates. And then we can move on to the creepy conservatory. We want to do these little shop features on the front here and for most of them I have used a magnetic block for the feature item mainly so that I can get some other item with an effect in close to it. Um, here I actually used the uh, magnetic block for the pumpkin because I didn't want the pumpkin to light up. Um, I, it is very bright when it lights up and it actually was taking over the rest of it. So one of those tricks, I guess, if for any reason you want an item to not have the effect it usually has, if you use a magnetic block, what I've realized generally is it won't have the effect. So here you can see it doesn't have that really bright glowing face, which means it doesn't overtake the uh, fright bulb on top of it. And I've chosen to make each of these shops an actual type of functional room. Obviously you don't have to do that, but I would like to have sort of NPCs going in and out of these buildings on the main strip. So making them usable buildings means that hopefully through the day you should see different people coming in and you see the monsters a lot going in and out of the summoning chamber and especially the creepy conservatory and that's also handy because they are putting items in that chest as well like um, the mushrooms. So 
so I decided here to do a little feature planter pot. Um, if you have a look on Twitter, you'll see a lot of the fantastic builders um, have made really cool sort of intricate little um, designs, themed designs using those little hexagons. And I thought I'd just do a basic version of that to go in the corner here. And because we have those uh, what appear to be open windows at the front of that building, the fact that the uh, leaves are sticking out the front of the building doesn't look too strange. It doesn't a look like um, they're coming out of a solid wall and it doesn't look on the inside like they're being cut off. So out here I was going to try and do a like a large swing and have a plushie sitting on it um, but I didn't quite have the room there so that's something I will probably put up on my large tree hill, um, a little three block swing. Um, unfortunately as well I'm guessing it must be just it's the withered tree, um, it doesn't actually register as a set. I did see a slime at one point sitting on it, oh, there he is, um, but I'm not sure if that was just the block that he happened to be sitting on. So for each of the little front um, parts of the shops, I did try to think a little bit about what was inside and so what would best represent that. And because we've got the creepy conservatory in there, I wanted to have a little sort of area that looked like maybe that's where they collect water. And something that led with the overall theme as well, which is sort of like the kind of shops you would see in a video game. So I figured if this was maybe somewhere where you would get... Um, items for potions or something like that you may see like a little herbal garden so at this point i started using the stone lights as well um, in front of all the buildings and they look really nice at night and they don't actually take up too much sort of they're not too showy they don't take up too much space so i've decided i'm going to use them um, as my lighting feature at least in this area maybe not all over the total town depending on what i want the rest of the town to look like but for this area leading down to the beach and up to the castle we'll try to keep this same theme So my idea with the wizard's workshop is that I would want to try and put quite a lot of stuff in the room um, just because I kind of had that idea that, um, you know, it was sort of a messy, eccentric place. So we want to fit a lot of objects in there. And it can be difficult to still move around. Um, I did cut this up a little bit more because I moved stuff a little bit. Um, because you you want people to be able to move and not end up standing on tables and things like that. Um, the bookshelf as well is a um, really easy thing to do with like cupboards and shelves and then bookshelves either on the side in the middle and it creates like a multi-level uh, display item which is always nice. And because this and the summing chamber have a larger workbench 
Um, I've tried to integrate them both into kind of like a tiered sort of platform table um, with some items around the back and kind of doesn't look out of place that way even though the tables are round as long as we've got enough sort of decorations around. Uh, we also needed to have another incense holder down lower um, because the one I had up there wasn't registering and I didn't want to move it. I think it's a nice feature um, so I threw another one in the corner that's less visible. And so the next idea I have with this one because I wanted it to be very busy is to put in lots of lanterns. Um, a lot of them hanging down quite low and then flowers as well just to give it that crowded feeling and I decided to go with because I wanted to use wisteria purple are uh, the black ones because they're going to be not as sort of intrusive and uh, the blue and white as a nice bright accent. Um, I was considering pink but I want to go with blue to match that wizard's workbench. And again, because I wanted to make it crowded, I decided to try and fit a whole little sort of tea area in the corner. Um, I really like these connecting corner couches. It's really easy to make like little booths that don't take up too much space, but look really sort of nice and cozy. Um, so we grab some teapots as well. And I figure this is sort of pre or post your little oracle reading. You sit down and have a tea or maybe even they read your tea leaves. And so you see there, we're just going to put in the last few accents, which is the tea set and some cups and a book. Um, so it's all the little details like this that make a difference. And if you're not sure what to put in, I just suggest having a think about what the room is for um, and making up a little story, you know, like um, one sentence like I did, you know, reading tea leaves. Um, and that really helps add just a little bit of interesting story behind a design which really makes a difference. I figured wisteria was a good way to accent the front and because I really liked the effect of those hanging lanterns on the inside I decided to be quite bold with just having them a lot of them and very long at the front of the shop um, sometimes it is the thing where it's you know you can destroy everything in a few seconds if you get it wrong so testing sort of weird bold things like this is the best way to come up with stuff because if you don't try then it you're never going to know if it's going to work um, i really thought that having those lanterns the way i did sort of cascading down to the door at first looked not great but like i've said in other videos if you just keep persevering and have confidence that it's going to look better once you put more things in um, I'm glad I didn't obviously go back and say no that's too much because I think in the end this is probably this and the creepy conservatory are my two favorite shop fronts out of the four and so sometimes the other thing that is 
great way to boost your creativity is just try and use the items you have that you need to get rid of. So I had one too many of the couch and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with a single purple couch and I certainly couldn't fit any more inside without it being crowded. Um, so I just tried to put down the table and the papers and it actually looks quite nice and because it's near those big ferns it's sort of like a, a small outdoor feature and once we put in the sewing columns it all comes together and matches the rest. So again it's just that confidence of thinking that things will match up and look good later. And here we're using one of the power crystals from Moonbrook. Um, people have videos out there of how you can get them, but you can also pay for them. Um, and I have just raised the platform a little bit so you can't see that there is a bathtub behind it. So that is giving that nice steaming effect. And then once we've got the sort of uh, scrying ball and the statue there it's a uh, nice sort of floating effect with them and it's all finished and we can move on to the next one so because the creepy conservatory and the wizard's workshop are a lot more busy uh, the smithy and the summoning chamber are going to be a lot more simple on the outside um, for the outside we have just used the serpent I haven't used the magnet block here because I actually want it to uh, spit water occasionally and we just done it on the shallow function with a block chip down so that you can't really see the water and the blue uh, flame so again it's a simple effect and you only occasionally see the water but that means that it's not too busy overall when you count in the other shots. So I had already thrown in all the required items for the summoning chamber here just because I um, wasn't sure what they were at first um, and now I'm just going to plan around them. Um, it's probably the one shop I'll be in the least um, but I still want to make it look nice but I'm also more of a fan I won't lie of the cuter stuff so I don't spend as, time, as much time in here but we still make it look nice and, uh, nice and yucky. So I put a little sort of chain station I'm not really sure what that is but like the wizard's workstation we made a little um, round tiered area to put some decorations about around the back of that workbench So I wanted to get a photo of Malroth and for the long ways picture I went the wrong way. You need to rotate clockwise. Um, I forgot and went counterclockwise but I'm actually going to keep the photo because um, when you put it up I see it's actually quite funny anyway. Um, I might go back and do a similar picture um, but you just need to use your front triggers to rotate the photo. It can be a little bit hard to work out. You can see this is upside down but if it was the right way up it would look a bit better. I think I might take another one with all the monsters and put it in there. Um, so this is this one pretty much done for the inside and the outside um, like I said we don't want to make it too busy um, but we do want to do a few interesting things with it so I decided to use a magnet block for this tree because I wanted to be able to try and put lanterns in I tried a few different ways at first I wanted to use rope and see if I could have them hanging from the branches but the one thing I realized is because it, you can't have the rope lined up perfectly it makes it really obvious that it's sort of off center um, so I abandoned that idea and went with the more traditional way that people do things which is using shifting sands um, and I realized as well without using the ropes it's actually fine I suggest sort of putting a bunch everywhere like I am here and then just working out which ones look the best and keeping them and then the great thing obviously with the shifting sands is they'll just hang there nicely. Even if it doesn't have like a perfect rope or anything, 
attached if it's just slightly floating you have to remember that you won't really notice that effect I mean there they're not actually they're actually sort of hanging half a block off the tree but you can't really tell um, and I wanted to again with the simple effect and that um, black and white little uh, alcove over the window there I wanted to just do some bunting as well that was the same um, and I decided to use just a few sort of rocky dark features. I used a piece of black coral and some of the floating stones and just one more of the uh, dead trees as well. Um, and again just a little bit of green so that it didn't look totally grey and that's the great thing with the red rock as well and the uh, little purple accent plant. It just gives it that little bit. And you'll see in the background here I had gone back in and put a garden. I'll change that um, and add more similar stuff to what we'd had originally. Just a few more of the coffee and the buckwheat accents to match with what's going to be the main plant accent theme for our town. And so that is it for the four buildings. So hopefully you can see that it's not too hard to take a basic sort of building inside and outside and make it very decorative as long as you just sort of play around with different colors and themes and like I said don't be scared to sort of put things in and take them out hopefully with that sped up version you can see that sometimes things work first time sometimes they don't um, and if there's anything that you guys want to see let me know but I will put out some more stuff shortly